All right, yeah, back again. It is Power Moves. It's your boy, BQ. We're going to talk the latest episode of NWA for May 7th, 2024, the main event of this program. And this should now be the end of hard times with EC3 and Thrill Billy Silas Mason in the main event. So pretty pretty decent episode, solid, solid enough episode. Uh, I had interest when they announced the card. I had interest in AJ Francis. Um, and I always have a little bit of interest in EC3 because he's, uh, you know, he has always been one of my faves. But we'll talk a little bit more about EC3 when we get to that point. So if it's your first time here, I'm your boy, BQ. Uh, I'm a 99% TNA channel. Um, that's where my my bread is buttered. But uh, I do review NWA every week. And um, it, it just a, it's just a show that I enjoy watching. That it's fairly easy to digest. The matches are not uh, super freaking long to the point that you're just exhausted and just you know you know what I'm saying like you just can't go anymore. Um, so uh, let's get into this episode of Power. I'm a little tired this morning, so um, I- I'm tired a lot. I don't sleep a lot, uh, but I'm I'm definitely feeling the effects this morning. So uh, bear with me a little bit, folks. This starts off with. Uh, EC3 video package, EC3 and Silas Mason, they're promoting, pro, excuse me, promoting the main event of this show. I have, I, I assume that all these matches were recorded in one day. I don't think there was, uh, you know, like two, two days of tapings for this. I could be wrong, but uh, usually when you have a crowd this size, you can't, you don't get them there two nights in a row. Usually if you're promoting, Hey, this is a pay-per-view style event. That's when you get the large crowds. It this is uh, Dothan, Alabama, so it's going to be interesting to see where they are next week. I don't know off the top of my head. I know when they were going into the the next card, it showed Mike Orlando on there, which tells me they're in Florida. I just I don't remember where they were taping, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm just very interested to see coming off how good. Hard times looked on TV with the large crowd, good production. I'm interested to see how it's going to look going back to normal television. Hopefully it's not a huge, huge drop off, but a uh, very good job with the video package with EC3 and Silas Mason at the top of this thing to uh, promote their main event match world title on the line. I don't know what ads everyone gets when they watch NWA on the CW. If I got to see that Mint Mobile commercial with Ryan Reynolds again, I may throw myself, I may light myself on fire, throw myself out the window. It was okay. It was cute one time. Every single commercial break, one commercial break played it twice. I hope that I never have to see that commercial ever again. This thing kicked off with Brian Idol and AJ Francis. So AJ Francis is doing excellent work in TNA right now. I don't know how he's doing in MLW. I'm sure it's great if he's even there yet. Uh, Everything he does is good. It's entertaining. I know he's not the world's most popular wrestler from the Top Dollar days and Flop Dollar and all that, but I, I love AJ Francis. He entertains the shit out of me personally. This kicked off with Brian Idol, who... Man, Brian, I was I was looking at this. I said, man, Brian Idol, if the, if he were around uh, 30, 40 years ago, he I think he would have been a pretty big deal. Like he he's he's got a look that really fits, um, you know, like that 80s wrestling. He's he he's he's got it. So he cuts a promo and says that I, by, by the way, he's totally blown up in this promo, which was odd to me because all he did was come down to the ring but he's introducing aj francis as his friend i guess they have a history together going back like you would have just you would have never uh got me to believe you if you said hey um aj francis and brian idol went at it on the indies or whatever they were story they were telling i i just i have a hard time believing that's true but maybe it is 
But he cuts a promo introducing AJ as his friend, saying he's the hottest free agent in wrestling, which is a term I cannot stand. He's also not a free agent, but he perhaps was at the time that this was recorded. I'm not sure. Uh, AJ Francis comes down, says, you don't need to introduce me. Starts cutting a promo on the fans of Alabama, Dothan, Alabama, saying we're only friends because you're easy to manipulate. You don't matter anymore. You're a has-been. You need to retire like Nick Saban. And Brian Idol, excuse me, Brian Idol comes back with the the Seth Rollins, like, will you just shut your mouth? That's another. That's one of the worst comebacks in pro wrestling that, unfortunately, a lot of too, a lot of people use too often. Saying, will you just shut up? I mean, this has been since like the early two thousands. This has been a thing, and it's not it's not a good comeback. But then Brian Idol makes some kind of comment along the lines of they don't need any rules. And within five seconds, Kyle Davis gets the notification that this is a no disqualification match. A stipulation that I freaking hate. It doesn't matter what company. No disqualification, street fight, anything goes, no holes barred, no rules. Oh, my God. But I get it because when they announced this match, I was like, man, I just kind of have a hard time seeing AJ Francis versus Brian Idol in a regular match. and. You know, of course, they went the garbage route. And the match was decent enough. There was a sloppy moment where AJ was on the ground. Brian Idol jumped over him and uh, jumped up for a moonsault. Very similar to like the Tiffany Stratton moonsault, you know, like bounces his way up. But he, when he jumped over AJ Francis, he stumbled a little bit, went for the move too quickly. AJ Francis had to get up much quicker than I think he's capable of. <laughs> so when when uh, Brian Idol went for the moonsault, AJ Francis caught him and dropped him. Uh, but he's strong enough to pick him back up. Hits a tombstone, which I don't think anyone should ever kick out of. Uh, but Brian Idol kicked out of the tombstone. I would have ended the match right there, but it was a no disqualification match. So obviously they weren't going to go that direction. And then it ended it with an uh, eventual choke slam of, by AJ Francis on Brian Idol through the table. And that was the end of that one. Then we got Kyle Davis backstage with Tom Latimer. I was already concerned because I did not want Tom Latimer to win this match. And what the next match was, was a National Heavyweight Championship final. So they had a tournament. It was the number one seed, Tom Latimer. The number six seed, Blake Troop number two seed Zion and Paul Burchill, which I did not catch what his seeding was. Uh, I said this last week. I wanted Blake Troop to win this thing. I think he's as, just as a shooter. It's unbelievable that he should lose as often he does, often as he does in the way that he does. I would have the dude as one of your top heels in the company, honestly. So I really wanted him to win the championship here. I was like, he... He deserves this. He's a bad, like a legitimate badass. And it just felt right for me. It felt time. So it was a four-way match. It it didn't go too terribly long. Um, But the story that I was asking for was I wanted Blake Troop to win, and then I wanted Paul Burchill to get, to maybe be the one to get screwed over and then kind of work his way up storyline-wise. It's not where they went. What they did do, by the way, I, Austin Idol is. I am so annoyed every time this dude comes on the screen. I'm so disappointed he was not fired last week. I thought that was finally the opportunity. Like I find this dude's character to be so freaking annoying. Um, but again, he is Zion's father, you know, storyline. But what did happen here was Blake Troop was going to uh, hit one of his finishers on Tom Latimer, and then. Uh, Chris Silvio Esquire jumped on the apron and I guess told him not to do the move. Try to t- have him do a different move instead. So he went for like a, a spinning kick that missed. And then Tom Latimer hit the brighter side of suffering, which is a power bomb in NWA. It's not the DDT that it was in TNA once upon a time. And then Tom Latimer wins. And they said that he was completing the triple crown. 
I could have swore Tom Latimer's had this championship before. I, I could have sworn. Like I'm picturing, I'm picturing him holding it. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong on this. I just thought they needed to go a different direction. I don't particularly like Tom Latimer's promos or when he's at the top of the card. Um he looks great, but I just I've just never like been I never I don't know. I I've, I haven't connected him connected in excuse me, connected to him in the way that I I feel like I should have. I don't know. I did not want to see him win. I thought it was uh to put the belt on him was very safe. It just seems like he's one of those dudes that every like three or four months they're like, hey, we gotta get Tom Latimer a title or Tom Latimer in the main event. You know? Um I just want to see them build for the future a little bit better than this. And I wanted Blake Troop to win. But they did tell the story where Chris Sylvia Esquire screwed Blake Troop, so maybe now um Blake Troop is the one who has the long term build up to the national championship, but um he's a heel, so I don't know. But I don't I also don't know if him turning on Chris Silvio means he's gonna be a baby face now. I don't I don't know. I have no clue what uh clue what they're doing here. But I, I was very disappointed with the outcome. Then Vampiro cuts a promo on um it's cryptic, but it's on Natalia Markova saying she should have taken the flowers. I want Markova to team up with Vampiro because Markova cannot talk. She has a great look. She cannot talk. It's it's just her accent. That's strictly what it is. She needs a promo, excuse me, a promo, but a mouthpiece very badly. Um, and I, I Vampiro should be the dude. Main event was EC3 versus Silas Mason. I don't know about you guys. The main event cut off for me. I did not get to see the finish. It just it just cut off at one point and went into the next program and then i tried to the cw app is not something you can go back and and rewind because they force you to sit through the ads so i don't i don't know what happened with that um i stated last week i'm not i don't really like silas mason this stems to meeting him once in public and um not that uh, this is not a shot at him personally because i don't know him personally like that but um it was several years ago at an nwa event and you know i go to the merch table and he's just cutting a promo on me the entire time to the point where it's like, okay okay you know like first it's funny then it's like okay dude you know and he just never stopped so i walked away it was it was like more uncomfortable than me i know some rest some fans like oh i love when they stay in character this and this like it was it was too much for me man uh, that's not that's not what I go to those conventions for. Whatever, like I, you know, I want to, I want to meet the wrestlers, bullshit with them, take a photo, buy a photo, whatever. But you know, just sitting here, just kind of cutting a promo and it just it not stopping. Where I'm just like, okay, I get it, and it just kept going. So, I don't really cheer for the dude. I don't really have to have that much interest in him. Just because that was my lone opportunity to have any connection to the dude. That's that's all it is. You know, I have no idea how he is personally. I'm sure he's a lovely man. Um, so he takes on EC3. I don't like EC3's uh, not his ring gear, but his entrance gear. That thing he has draped over his shoulder. EC3 what is his, what was at his peak when he was Dixie Carter's nephew, and he wore the suit. And I'm not asking him to be Dixie Carter's nephew, but when he won the world title, I was expecting him to go back to the suit. And he looks good in a suit. We've had WA champions. They have the belt. They have the suit. You know, obviously Nick Aldis is the most popular one to do that. I thought for EC3, um, I know it's kind of a heel thing to wear the suit. Cody Rhodes pulls it off. So I I think EC3 can pull it off. So I, I would have just... Um, I would have liked to see that more than whatever he has going on now. It's just, it's just very odd to me. You know, the hair is always kind of disheveled. Like I, I would like a classier EC3 as a title, the champion, but that's not where they're going with it. Um, Silas Mason gave up his national championship for this match. Now, as I said here at the top, I think all these matches were recorded in one day and this is the 12th match. That's a lot of wrestling. 
I know that this is not the AEW, like everyone takes 25 minutes to win their match, but 12 matches in a row is a lot of wrestling. I thought that the crowd was not invested in this. I thought they were tired. They sounded checked out. They did not sound like they cared to me. And Joe Galleon commentary said, oh, this, you know, this crowd is shocked and stunned. They were bored. The match was very one-sided. Um, you know, I saw what, I see what they were trying to do, but it's very plotting. It was very slow. Uh, the moves weren't getting over. I don't think, you know, he, I don't think he was being enough of a heel to where people felt any kind of sympathy for EC3. It came off like the people were ready for the match to be over so they could go home. And, uh, just because I think there was too many matches on the card. Like if there was three less matches, I think you would have heard a very, very different crowd because there were some matches where the crowd was really rocking. They were really into it, but they were tired here. They were clearly tired. Um, I All I know is that EC3 won the match because as I said, it cut out. I saw that he hit the two one percenters. Silas Mason kicked out, hit the thrill Billy slam. EC3 kind of got over to the ropes. And um, they maybe wrestled for a couple more minutes, and then the app cut out. It just it just went to the next show. So I know that EC3 won. I don't know how he won. And we'll see what they do with Silas Mason after this. He's no longer the national champion. You know, he's going to be doing shit with the Southern Six. And we'll see. Um, as I said, I would imagine the next tapings are in Florida, because if Mike Orlando is on the card, he... Him and like uh, his lady got her. I'm forgetting her name for whatever reason. Uh, damn, I like her too. I'm just it's just escaping me. I believe they're based out of Florida, so they show up when they're in Florida. You know, they announce one or two other matches. So it's a little indie. I don't know what the main event of the program is. We have gone without a female match for several weeks now. You got to get the females on the show because the division is very, very good. Like no matter who they got out there, the matches are are pretty solid. So we'll see how this next one looks on TV. Because uh, this this hard times was it was a success. It looked great. There were a lot of people there. Um, but as I said, I think they had too many matches, and I think by the time you got to the main event here, I think people were bored because part of it is Silas Mason's music is boring. EC3's music is boring. Like there was nothing to to fire these people up when they came out. I used the example several weeks ago when EC3 took took on Matt Cardone in the main event, and that always ready hit, and the place was just absolutely rocking because of it. You know, like I'm a big uh, big music guy as far as uh, what kind of theme songs your champions should have, what kind of theme songs in general your wrestlers should have. And uh, sometimes you need those to wake the crowd up. And that just, that just didn't happen here. These guys just, just came out. Um, you know, I, I think with AJ Francis at the top of the card, they were into it. And then I think progressively throughout the show, um, people just kind of stopped caring. And that was kind of unfortunate. It was a solid enough episode. Um, now, again, I'm a little tired this morning. I usually podcast tired. That is just, that is just the way it goes. I am one of the uh, only podcasters in the world, I think, with a five-bedroom home that doesn't have a quiet area to podcast. <laughs> so um, I usually have to beat my family up in the morning. So then I got to get on here, and I'm like half falling asleep trying to podcast. So my my apologies for that. Quick, quick episode today. We'll be back next week to talk. NWA power. Hopefully I have a little bit more energy for you. I'll talk to you soon.